Thankfully, we are a long way away from the Republic of Misogyny. However, it's been six years now that I've acted for the cause of equality. It all started when I started my career in September 2015, when I've been graduated from my business school and I lived to London. I became a headhunter in finance. And as it was my first job, I was dedicated for this job. I was waking up early in the morning, I was having appointments during my lunchtime. Like, do you realize lunchtime appointment? I'm a French. <laughs> and I was even, even having interviews on the evening. Then, my whole world changed. When? When I realized that one of my male, male colleagues who was un underperforming was paid more than I was. To be clear, the company was making more money because of me, and I did, but I was the lowest paid. And do you want to know the saddest part of this story? I didn't have, wait for it, the ovaries to live. <laughs> What, I, what happened is that I came home and I cried with the sinking realization that my gender could determine my pay. This incident profoundly changed my life because I realized that a woman can earn less just because she's a woman. I wanted to understand why, how and how is it possible, and this is how I fell into feminism. From this battle, I wanted to keep an indelible trace of it. And as I was living in London, and especially in East London, I was a fan of a Banksy. And so, I restyled a Banksy's workpiece, and I had the feminist symbol. You can see my hum, and this is a feminist symbol. February 2019. I, was, I came back to France, and I decided with my sister to create Heroes and Associated, a gender advisory consulting firm. And one month later, in March 2019, I had one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life, but not in the good way. <laughs> Trust me, you won't be surprised. While I was having a meeting with the CSR director of one of the most prestigious luxury house in France, we start to talk about the cultural differences between France and UK. And you know, like I felt at ease, comfortable, and we started to talk about tattoo. And somehow, very proud, I showed me a man like, look, mm -mm -mm -mm, mistake. <laughs> and he told me like, what is it called? And I told him, it's called an awakening to feminism. Wow. Suddenly, the atmosphere changed. I, I could feel him holding back. The tone wasn't so warm anymore. And, you know, after a few seconds, which seemed like hours, he looked at me and said, Are you part of them? I was like, part of what? He said, you know, are you part of the feminists? You know, in his mouth, it sounded like a strange community with mystical rise. It sounded disgusting, let's say it. It sounded also like an extremist or a terrorist group, but nothing like the image that I have in mind. Obviously, you can guess, I didn't work for them, and you know, the conversation ended quickly, and I didn't hear back from him. But I, I wanted to speak about this because I was, I'm still shocked, to have to be honest. And while I was speaking to a friend who is an entrepreneur and also a woman dedicated to the cause, she said like, oh, Margot, but never say never that you are a feminist. You have to use the Trojan horse technique, you know, like tro tro the Trojan All you can do is act discreetly. Act discreetly? Well, what if instead of hiding, we look at what is wrong with the society perspective? Why is this word so taboo? Why does it sound like a declaration of war? So now, we'll have a game together. In the room, how many of you declare yourself as a feminist? Raise your hand if you feel concerned. Okay, can you keep your hands up? How many of you have felt the other person's attitude change after you said, I'm a feminist? Okay, <laughs> well, you've been there and I've been there too. And like Shimamanda and Gozi Adichie, I'm sure you know of her, who, who is a writer, a feminist activist, and a TED speaker. She said, it's like if we were saying, like, you're a supporter of terrorism. Up. 
And the thing is, like, I, soon after I was digging into the subject, I realized that people only believe what they are shown. Because there is kind of a paradox with this one, because on the one hand, we no longer take the time to dig into things, and on the other hand, we form an opinion very quickly. But the worst thing is, like, you only believe what you see. And what you see in the media is this. Comment les féministes sont devenues folles, la terreur féministe, fait les féministes vont-elles trop loin, or even like on BFM TV, like feminists are going too far. Ooh la la, <laughs> it's very helpful this one. Today, feminism meets three major stakes in representation, in activism, and in labeling. In representation, there is a study called Perception of Feminist Belief Influence Ratings of Warmth and Competencies done in 2017, has shown that feminists are perceived negatively, shiny and aggressive. Another article from the APA with an article wrote in 2006 pointing out that feminism is a movement who is seen as threatening, with this quote that I love, like, knowing that the media creates negative stereotypes of this powerful woman, Who would want to be a bra burner? Also, I made my own little studies, and this week, as I was telling that I was about to make a TED talk about feminism, I asked to my audience on LinkedIn, for you, is it a positive or a negative word? And out of 180 people, almost, for 38%, so let's say four people out of 10, for them, it's a negative word. Still today, and still in my audience. And you know, When I think back of this meeting with the CSR director, when he meant, like, are you part of them? What he really meant was, are you going to burn down my office? Obviously, I didn't. <laughs> the second strike we're meeting is activism. In general, regardless of the domain of activism, people have negative stereotypes with people because they think that having a feminist attitude is always negative. And let's be clear here, I'm not trying to convert you, but I just want to ask you, you to ask yourself, why do I think this about feminism? Where does it come from? Why did I read things? What is the image that I have in mind? Also, regarding this, I can't count the number of times I've heard people say, like, oh, but you know, you the feminist. I don't know. <laughs> You know, being feminist, it's like the scope of my words, the scope of my action was diluted because I must have been like somehow historical and obviously far away from the reality. Latest example, Christmas time. Oh, I love Christmas dinner. Like for the one who are having Christmas dinner in France, you know what I mean. And so, while my younger cousin was making a mayonnaise for the shrimps, yeah, don't worry, you will see where I want to go. <laughs> She failed it, and a woman that I love in my family looked at her and said, are you on your period? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I said, what? And she like, are you on your period? Because it's very known that women that went down their period, they fail mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, it's Christmas dinner. Are we really going to have this conversation right now? So my cousin was like, uh, no. I wanted to defend her, and I looked at this woman, and I told her, like, is this is bullshit, like, what is the link between, between period and mayonnaise? And she said, Margot, you're too extreme to understand, like, you the feminists, it's always the same, we cannot have conversation with you. What? <laughs> you're talking about mayonnaise and period, and I'm the crazy one here? F fine, I go out. <laughs> the third issue that we're meeting is, like, people, don't like labeling, and you see, my story is just this. People don't want to tell themselves that they are feminists because they don't want to be labeled. Hence, they will have a defensive reactions. I wish I said to the CSR director, don't put, don't put me in the box. In terms of stereotypes that I've heard, and you may have heard them too, I'm not a feminist, but I'm for equality. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> You feminists, you want to suppress men? Okay, obviously. We don't need feminism anymore. Gender equality is already there. Feminism removes the difference between women and men. I don't know how, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> feminists are historical classic. <laughs> and my favorite one, feminists hate all men. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, 
Are we, gonna, we will have to pay again. Can you stand up? Yes, stand up. If you believe that women should be paid the same as men, stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cool. Could you stay up? If you believe that women and men deserve to vote, or if you don't, you can sit down. Please don't sit down. <laughs> And can you believe, can you still stay up if you believe that our women are free to dispose of their bodies? Way, well, congratulations! <laughs> yeah, we can applaud each other. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you, you can stand up. Well, congratulations, you are all feminist and none of you is extremist. So, yeah, uh, maybe we should call the fire be great because if they're all starting fire to their bra, we're going to have problem. <laughs> Just saying. Honestly, did you see any sign of aggressiveness? No. So, okay, what is feminism? Well, very easy. Feminism is a movement whose aim is to defend gender equality between men and women, obviously, on three different levels. Economic, politic, and social level. That's it. Feminism is first and foremost about freedom. It's not about evicting men, it's not about denigrating a gender toward another, it's about freedom. And in Europe, this quest for freedom is what has guided men and women since the 18th century. We have three waves of feminism, and I'm not going to give you a class about history, but for information. And the three aspects, like voting and property rights, sexuality and reproductive rights, and rights for all, have been expressed through the th these three waves. What is quite crazy is that each wave has already met, has always met the same resistance and the same violence. So the people are saying like, yeah, but you know, the feminists before, they, are welcome, they were calmer. Uh, no, <laughs> not really. And in terms of stereotypes, I'm often asked a question, you know, people, they're like, Margot, you're like, yeah? <laughs> do you like men? Not in terms of sexual orientation, but do you like men? Well, <laughs> I will say it, it's not because you are defending rights for women that you are against men. Once again, it's not because you are defending rights for women that you are against men. A quick story about this. So, maybe you may not know, but uh, I, I will be graduated in uh, sexual health and reproductive health this summer. Just a quick question. How many days women are fertile in a month? Three. How many days men are fertile in a month? 30. Or whereas today, in France, the contraception is taken mostly by women. So, to the, answer, to the question, where does the freedom lie? The answer is both. Up. Today, Women can vote, they can enter all the profession, and obviously, if we compare the situation from now to the beginning of the 20th century, important milestones have been reached. Today, rape is a crime and gender equality is a constitutional principle. But how do you explain these figures? One in seven women has experienced a sexual assault in a lifetime. Women, they earn 9% less than men for the same job, same position, and same amount of time. One in two women have already been confronted with situations of sexism and sexual harassment. So, and it's the last time that I will need your help, raise your hand, but only if you feel comfortable. Women, have you ever been victim of a sexist act or comment, like when you were walking in the street or any time? Raise your hand if you feel. Okay, I'm going to raise my hand too, you know, like, I need to have the others as well. <laughs> well, be reassured, or maybe not, it concerns all of us. 90% of women in France have been victims of a sexist act and comment. Today, women do not feel the same sense of freedom, and it's up to us to change this. I really like this quote of Dalai Lama, saying like, if you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito and see which one keeps the other awake. Added to this, I'm allergic to mosquitoes, so trust me, it speaks to me in particular. 
Defending freedom involves everyday words and gestures, which may seem insignificant, but really betray our relationship with others. And so, I will tell you a personal story. Ten years ago, when I was in your shoes, we, you know, we had like, made a business school and we were going out. And while we were getting ready with my friends, um, maybe one of them was wearing a, sh a short skirt. And I looked at her and I said, ooh, tonight there's one who get hit tonight, which means in French, like, ooh la la, ce soir, il y en a une qui va choper. <laughs> and yay, laughing, you've been there too. <laughs> And you know what? I'm laughing, but it's not funny because I feel so ashamed today because this kind of sentence feeds the rape culture. Like, it's like if you, when you're wearing a short skirt, obviously you want to seduce a man. Why do women and sexuality not go together? Let us stop thinking with a spectra of morality, but think with, think with a spectra of freedom. If we really want to act in the name of women's and men's freedom to dispose of their own body, do you know the only question we need to ask ourselves? Consent. The only question we need to ask ourselves is if consent was present. The rest is irrelevant. When a girl gets hit on the public transfer, when a woman is afraid to go home at night, when a girl is afraid to wear a short to make her casual Sunday running, when ranking of girls are made in school with the hottest one, when compromising videos are shared on social network, each time ask yourself, who am I to judge? Is our freedom respected? And why can I, what can I do to act positively and make sense change? We are the change. We have the power to change our perceptions and to change our behavior. Inside this room, because I'm sure there is one, there is maybe the next CSR director of this luxury company. And it's up to you, it's up to us to change our relationship with others. Our voice matters, each of us, you, 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 everyone. Never think you're too small to make a difference. When a girl gets picked on public transport, go up to her and pretend she's a friend of you that you haven't seen a long time ago, like, oh, Angelina, how are you? Um, it's been a long time. Should we go down now? Yes. Then get out of the train station or the bus station and let her come to Saints safely. When one of your friends tells you that she has experienced violence, rape, or even touching, don't try to understand, since you will not understand. You haven't gone through what she has. Tell her, trust me, these two sentences that can save her life. It's not your fault, and I believe you. When a friend starts a business, support her on social network, and if you can, buy what she sells. When you hear that a woman is being degraded from your loved one, Ask them what if, it if it makes them feel comfortable to have this kind of conversation. When a woman's body is shamed because she's supposedly too fat, defend her. You never know what people have been through their life. When there are conferences with guests, thank you, Ted, <laughs> always ask yourself if women are present. You have the power to make things change. By doing this little action, you will empower not only them, but you too. By defending freedom of others, you will become a better person and the world be, will be a better place. And remember this, this sentence, not to defend the oppressed is to side with the oppressor. Thank you. <laughs>